in this video I'm going to be talking about my journey learning coding and hacking. So for those who don't know, I'm a cyber security professional. I'm currently a security consultant and I specialize in governance, risk management and compliance. So it's very much the paperwork, audit, assurance type of side of cyber security. So it's not hugely technical. However, I've taken it upon myself to become more technical and learn more about offensive security and about coding and development. So yeah, I'll be talking about coding for a little bit to begin with then we'll get into offensive security and hacking and what I'm doing so yeah let's get into it So when it comes to coding, it's quite a broad term. I mean, you can split this up into two different things. One is called programming and one is called scripting. And this area is very important for me because I really want to learn how things work under the hood and how to actually build stuff. But I don't want to become a full fledged developer or programmer day to day. I'll probably be using more scripting, which is just quick, like automated tasks, you know, one or two pages of code to do things as opposed to thousands and thousands of lines or pages of code that like is a full kind of piece of software or program. However, I want to be able to understand how a program or piece of software like that works, but I don't want to necessarily develop the skills to build one. But you never know, that might change down the line. So I kind of started my journey with picking a language and I thought Python is the best place to start. And what I've done is I've took the PY4E, Python for Everybody, by Dr. Chuck Online, who's one of the most famous Python tutors. But I'll be honest and say I really struggled with it and it's not because of him being a bad teacher or it being a bad course or anything like that. I think just that format of learning where you've got like videos and someone speaking to you and you're kind of watching them and trying to copy and follow along isn't something I've necessarily done for a long time. I think the best way I learn is from a book. So even though I did do one pass of that kind of course and went back and started again and there was another course on YouTube as well that I started following along and I have built little things that, like rock paper scissors games and basic kind of scripts that pull data out of a spreadsheet and you know very simple type of applications that don't really do anything fancy what i have actually done is purchased this the python crash course i'll link this in the description so the reason i chose this book the python crash course is because it was just one of the best reviewed after doing my research online i just found that it's one of the best books for beginners so I'm kind of disregarding everything I've learned through YouTube and PY4E and kind of starting again from a book and I know that might seem weird to some people but to be honest I mean I've passed exams just literally learning through books and the last three exams that I have done have been through book learning so I think I'm just used to that I'm just used to having a physical book that I can go through page by page do stuff practically with along the side and it just works for me I don't know maybe it's just that I Idea of having something physical where I can remember how it felt to like turn the page and what the page layout with it is and how it looked like and I can highlight things and make doggy ears and put little sticky markers in them so yeah that's just how I learn and I think you know everyone has their own learning style this might not work for somebody else you know it might be better that they do follow a video or that they learn in some other way and another really important thing I've been doing as well in regard to coding is actually I've followed in a few YouTube channels and have been listening to a few kind of key lectures about development coding programming whatever you want to call it and really kind of starting to get used to the language the lingo the topics the kind of pain points what other developers are doing what they're thinking about what they're making videos about you know just to try and dive into the world a little bit more so there's good few channels that i've been following one of them is called prime time this guy is hilarious and i think the other one's called molly rocket and i've also just been watching a few other random development channels if you know any that i should be watching or following please drop them in the comments i'd love to find out what good youtube channels can help me on my coding journey but yeah Another thing is like watching some key documentaries or key kind of studies. A very interesting one was the 30 million line of code problem. 
can't remember the exact title, but essentially it's talking about how bloated software has become and of some of the underlying issues with development and operating systems and the kind of inefficiencies of code because our hardware has got so much better where essentially code can be more inefficient because the hardware is better, things are faster, computers are more powerful. Back in the day, you had to write a really good, clean and efficient program but nowadays it's not as important because in terms of performance you have really good hardware that will just make up for bad code essentially it's a bit more in depth but i think you should check that out there's a few talks on youtube as well that are just great that i've highlighted that issue i plan to eventually kind of dive into some assembly and lower level languages but to be honest to begin with i do want to start with python maybe followed by C and then maybe a little bit of assembly. So yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing so far in my own little coding journey. I've been really enjoying it. I just wish I had more time to do it. I'm sure in the next six months, I'll be at least able to write some basic programs and scripts that can do things. But one thing I'm really happy about is at the minute I can look at a page or a few pages of Python and kind of understand what's going on, which is really good because I can kind of read code to a degree and I've looked at a few pages of other types of code and generally I can kind of follow along and I guess have a little bit of an insight into what's going on I don't know the ins and outs I've obviously got a lot to learn but I know what the program is doing or designed to do just by looking at it and like reading it and thinking about it so yeah that's something I'm quite proud of now the next thing that I have been I wouldn't say learning, but preparing for, kind of getting the things in place to start my journey is preparing myself to essentially learn more about offensive security. So I'm not a complete new beginner to offensive security. I have done some try hack me, hack the box. I did TCM security, practical ethical hacking course like four years ago. So I do have some basic skills, I would say, in terms of offensive security, but haven't touched it for a long time. I've forgotten a lot of the stuff that I used to know. So what I've done recently is I've kind of prepared my laptops that I want to be using. So on my daily driver, my Mac Air, I've installed VMware Fusion and actually got a Kali Linux virtual machine up and running. It took me a while to figure out how to do that because after VMware was bought by Broadcom, they've changed the way you kind of access the download page. Or VMware Fusion that's probably the hardest bit to figure out because you have to fill out all of this like salesy type of marketing stuff and whatever else and go through all this rubbish to just basically download it and then once I downloaded it the rest of the installation process was pretty much the same. There's plenty of guides on YouTube on how to install Kali Linux on Macs. I've actually got a guide on how to do it on Windows. It was actually one of my first videos but yeah check that out if you've got a Windows machine and you want Kali Linux. And it's not to say Kali Linux will make you the best offensive security professional. I don't think it really matters which operating system you use. Of course we know Kali Linux is a very good operating system for offensive security, but there are other options like Parrot, and you can also use a normal Linux installation. And when I say normal, I mean something a little bit more plain, like maybe Linux Mint or whatever it is, and kind of just install and configure your own tools one by one. So it's more about using the tools and understanding what's going on and what to do. So those skills are more important than just having a good operating system. It's quite a lot of jokes, you know, people just download Kali Linux and think they're a hacker, which is true because I've downloaded Kali Linux and now I'm a hacker. Nah, I'm missing. Yeah, now I've got that up and running, I'm kind of ready to start the offensive security journey. I think I want to do a little bit more coding before I start because I don't want to focus on two things at a time. I at least want to get the kind of foundational knowledge for Python cemented and be able to do a little bit more before I start doing the offensive security stuff. And it's not just going to be offensive security, it's going to be a bit of security engineering and a bunch of different things. So yeah, that's going to be fun. I mean, my plan at the moment, I'll be honest, is a little bit of a mix of try hack me and 
TCM security courses. I mean, TCM security have the great academy. They've also got Python for hackers, which I do want to do as part of my Python journey as well. Yeah, I think that'll be a good option for getting better at offensive security. And another thing is going to be probably looking at the hack the box courses. I've got a friend who's recently started them and he speaks so highly of them and they do look great. But I do think that's more of a down the line type of thing. And to be completely honest, I don't want to leave GRC. Let me just make that clear. You know, I'm learning development and learning a bit more about offensive security to become a better GRC person, to become a better security consultant, an information security officer, manager, whatever you want to call it. You know, I'm diving deeper into these topics because I think that is kind of the weaker side of my knowledge. I'm good at understanding GRC cybersecurity frameworks. I've got a lot of experience with implementing things like ISO 27001 end to end, you know, GDPR and data privacy and all the different kind of cybersecurity compliance and security requirements. So, yeah, I'm good at that stuff. But what I'm not as good at is the deep technical stuff. I definitely think the gap in my knowledge is really understanding code programming, scripting, and some offensive security and security engineering. And even on the offensive security, I think it's a very specific portion. I'd like to think I'm good at the scanning and the reconnaissance and the initial phases of what a hack would look like. But I think what I do definitely need to get better at is the actual exploitation, lateral movement, privilege escalation, and those kind of items. So yeah, it's going to be an interesting journey. And that's kind of what I've been doing so far. I'll try and chuck as many resources in the description just in case any of this sounds interesting to you and you want to check one of the resources out. But yeah, now thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. Show some love and I'll see you in the next one.